everybody. I have had her in my life forever for how many years is it now? 36? 36. 36. Yeah. Since we were five or, or six. Yeah, we were since kindergarten. we were negative three. <laughs> yes. yes. Hi, everybody jumping on. Yeah. So we wanted to talk today because, um, well, I, I sent an article to Kim uh, a couple of days ago that I had read that sparked a lot of, well, first of all, a lot of gratitude for me because, yeah. um, because I do have Kim and um, I know how blessed I am to have a relationship that is so healthy. It is beautiful. It is healthy. Um, we balance each other out. When I have hard days, she brings me back up. When she has hard days, I help bring her back up. Sometimes we get to events together and then come back together yes. to a higher vibration. But the truth is, we know that not everybody has that. And this article, which we're, we'll, we'll, we will put in the comments because I think every woman should read it, was a real eye opener for both of us. So and I'll let you, Tim, talk about yeah. what, what you thought. Yeah. So the article is called, Are You Lonely? And probably a lot of you, you might have seen it already. It was featured on the Good Mor Morning America site. It was Amy Porterfield, Jenna Kutcher, and Rachel Hollis. Um, of course, Rachel Hollis is the author of Girl, Wash Your Face. Jenna Kutcher, I'm taking a course from her right now, and she's just awesome. And Amy Porterfield is known for her content um, creativity for um, women business owners. And the article was all about them getting together for a girl's weekend. And the conversation that was sparked was that not one of the three of them had somebody other than their family or husbands or partners that they texted or talked to, talked to every day. And so what ultimately came out of that was their sense of loneliness this idea that all of them had kind of the string of the same idea, which was it was hard to trust other women. Um, actually, it was, it was broader than that. It was just hard to trust in general. Mm -hmm. um, and it just made Jody and I sit back a second and talk about when we started doing these lives a couple weeks ago, we did it with the intention to create um, more space for you all to be a part of our conversations because it's really, we get on here and we just talk like we would talk on the phone. And so we want to talk about trust. We want to talk about um, the programming that you guys were given as little girls um, around friendship. Yeah. And what I loved about what she posted was that she, they took some pictures for Instagram because they are <clears throat> huge influencers, you guys on, on social media. Um, Rachel Hollis has like one point three million Facebook followers on her Facebook page. And um, I think it was actually Jenna who had tagged the photo and uh, on Instagram and could have said just a weekend with my girls and made other women feel like, oh my gosh, look at them. Look at how beautiful it must be to have a friendship of these three people they're all such huge influencers on social media and in the world because of that. Um, and instead, because of the conversations they had had, they posted it, are you lonely? Right. And that is such a like real question as opposed to sh trying to show up and say, oh my gosh, look at how beautiful our lives right. are, how lucky we are to have each other. The truth is all three of these women outside of that weekend that they planned after meeting each other from social media and going to like places and um, workshops together, they didn't have each other before. Right. And in fact, all of them felt lonely. Right. So you can have a following of 1.3 million people and still be lonely. Yeah. And I feel like that is what social media does for a lot of us women is make us feel like we're not enough as in so many ways. Oh my gosh, my house isn't enough. My kids aren't enough. My hair and my clothes aren't enough. But then like, I'm not even enough as a friend, as like right. a, as a person to have friends around me. But right. um, yeah, hi Kyla. And hi everybody jumping in. Um, I, I want you to talk about, because I know you said when we talked about this, because you hear this in sister circle all the yeah. time, the truth is, we are programmed to not trust other women. Yeah. We have 
all of the housewives shows showing women go at each other, compete, hate each other, have an enemy. Yeah. That is what we are shown as female friendship right. as adults. Yeah. Right. And of course it starts with mean girls, movies and all that kind of stuff. But the truth is, is that little girls can be mean. They don't know who they are yet. And they're trying to all like find themselves. But as women, it is time for us to say, okay, I may not even be um, proud of who I was when I was in a younger state of mind, but now I don't have to fight and compete. That is not what female friendships and female support is supposed to be about. Well, and ultimately it ends up being about forgiveness. I have held sisterhood circle here in Nashville for years. And I sat in sisterhood circle, motherhood circle, vision circle, priestess circle in New York before that. And there's a common theme with women who come in, which is at some point in their life, they either were not shown how to trust other women or they were literally programmed not to trust other women. So they were programmed to um, that women are backstabbers, right? And if that's where you, how you're programmed, which some of you might be too, um, then as experiences happen, because they will, right? Because we're all human, so little girls are gonna be mean, adult women are gonna be wounded and show up not in their best light, just like Jody and I do also. Um, mm -hmm. but if we don't have a basis of forgiveness, then it's hard to move through that. So part of this is also looking at who you want to be now and looking at your life. What are you missing? What do you want in your life? What would feel good to you? And Jody and I have talked about this so many times because we are very lucky. We are very blessed. We talk almost every day, but also too, just a reminder that if you're feeling lonely, you're not alone, first of all. But also, too, mm -hmm. these three women who are mega influencers on social media, they didn't know each other outside of social media until they created this weekend together. So one of the things Jody and I were talking about, too, is what our programming was as little girls. Um, growing up, my mom had one or two close friends, one really best friend. Her name's Marilyn. Um, and she was super close to her sister, but I didn't see her surrounded by lots and lots of women. Me, I love being surrounded by women. I love it. And it goes back to our programming from way before we were even here, which is tribal, right? Having the women around us to help support and help us rise up. So Jody, what was your, we've talked about this, but like for you, what was your programming? Well, I, you know, I would actually say that um, my mom w was a salon owner with four of her best friends growing up. Yeah. So I actually did see my mom surrounded by women yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I saw her go away for conventions and, and hair shows and stuff with her girlfriends. Yeah. Um, come back with like hilarious stories. They actually had, I was actually just talking to my dad about this. They had a mannequin head that they named Barbie that had like a crazy hairdo because they used to like <laughs> yeah. cut it and perm it and do all this right. stuff. And they would go places and put this head in the car with them and like freak people, like ask for directions. And when someone came to the car, there'd be like a mannequin head in the back seat, like tr looking all normal. In fact, I think Barbie's face was like taken off the mannequin head so somebody could put it on. Oh my that God. Back seat of so they would have a body in the back seat with a Barbie mask with a crazy hairdo sitting with these women. So I actually have always kind of um, known that women can have a lot of fun together yeah. and be really good friends. And of course, you know, in a setting with a lot of women, there is also going to be, like you said, there's always going to be wounded people who show up in a not as great light. So drama, backstabbing, um, you know, just a lot of that kind of stuff. So I did know that that can exist. Yeah. But the truth is, when you get to a point in your life where, um, where you have, you can forgive things from your past, you want to be open to female adult friendships. You have to be very specific in knowing what you want right. out of that friendship and go and look for that person, the right people, not toxic people. Don't surround yourself with people because you like the way they look or the way that they, um, who they hang out with or with the cars they drive or whatever. Like you have to find out what makes you who you are and seek out the people who are the same way as that. Yeah. So they may not be 
um, you know, in the same church as you, or they may not be in the same field of work as you. But the truth is, if you can find that common um, bond of like really loving something and then base your friendship around that, it gives you that, you know, that place to like, I don't know, like just have a connection and then make sure that you're both on the same page. Yes. So like if you want the person that you can text every single day, like you and I do, if you try to start a friendship with somebody and you meet them and you try texting them, you're like, Hey, haha, I just saw this on TV. It made me think of you. And they don't respond for four or five days. It doesn't mean that they're ignoring you. It just means that their life's priorities are a little bit different and they're not looking for that friendship that needs a daily text message. Right. You know what I mean? They'll show up in it. And so figure out what it is that you would really like to have in your life. And then, you know, just kind of start looking for that based on something real, not fake. Yeah. You cannot base it on who you think you want to be or a persona that you are not. Because the truth is like, I can't imagine not telling you everything about my life. Yeah. You know, everything. And I am not going to have a friendship where I have to show up as somebody different than right. who I actually am. Let's look at some so, of the questions too. Um, Rebecca says, that's exactly me, Jody Jelena Hurt. <laughs> and Kim's right. It's about forgiveness. I might need a little, uh, let's see if I, I can't actually, I can't expand the questions. Maybe you can. Okay, let me see. Rebecca K. Um, and I also said. I might need a little help in that field. Yes. Yeah, so. Yes. I can I really, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. The, one of the first things, no, you go, no, you go. One of the first <laughs> things is, you know, people hear forgiveness and they're like, Oh, that means I have to forgive all these people that were so awful to me. It really doesn't mean specifically always. Sometimes it does. It depends on what your healing process is, but it really comes to self forgiveness. If there is something holding you back from showing up in your best light, and attracting the people that you want to be with, um, start working there. I, we still do it. Jody and I still do self-forgiveness practices. It's really a part of a daily routine and ritual. And somebody else mentioned that society is showing us kind of like what Jody said, society is showing us with like real housewives of wherever the cattiness and we're like drawn to that. Right. Um, and I saw Kyla say that she was, uh, I've been scared of friendship my entire life. So I would love to hear a little bit more about that. I know that um, Kyla's story is not everybody's story. And so we want to hear from you guys. What is your programming? What have you been scared of? We know for sure that experience um, trains us, right? Mm -hmm. We know that mm -hmm. experience trains us. And we also know that when we get to a certain place in our life, we have to do maintenance. We have to look at what we have, what we don't have, what we want, um, what we don't want anymore. And I think lately, especially, there's been a lot of focus in um, getting rid of all the toxicity, which is important. It's number one. But on the flip side of that, then it's also, then how do you restore? If we're getting rid of the toxicity, what are we restoring it with? How are we bringing it in? And one of the things that Jody and I have been blessed with, and I know a lot of you in here have been too, is being part of different teams, um, business teams. And there are people in here right now watching us that we didn't even know a year ago, but we are so close to, and we talk to them multiple times a week. And because we have a camaraderie, we have something in common. We have a main goal. Um, you know, for us, it happens to be kind of a larger string of self-development. And there's a lot of things that fall under that, but start to look in your life and see what are some things that are super important to you. And are there other groups available that you can insert yourself into? Yeah. And again, nowadays, the beauty of the internet is that even on Facebook, there is a Facebook group for absolutely everything in the entire planet. I don't care what you are obsessed with. It might be chinchillas. If you are obsessed with that'd be amazing. There is a group of chinchilla lovers. I guarantee it. There is a way for you to find those people and like just become part of a conversation and see, you know, and then when you get into a huge Facebook group, you can ask where who's local to me. Start yeah. a, get a get a, a a conversation about a lunch or a coffee meetup or a hike if you have a places where you can hike if you're local. Like find those people and just, you know, very slowly 
develop a relationship. But again, as you were saying, Kim, when it comes down to forgiveness, and we're not saying that if somebody was super mean to you, um, if your best friends turned their backs on you in high school and or your best friend, you know, betrayed you, I understand that it, it might still hurt too much to forgive that individual person. And to be honest, that person may not even still be a good person. You don't have to forgive them specifically, but don't hold it against all other women. Forgive right. womanhood and sisterhood. Mm -hmm. At least forgive others for what one person did to you so that you can open yourself up to know that not everybody is like that. Yeah. That there are good people out there. Yeah. There are always going to be bad seeds in all types of people. But if you can forgive the wholeness so that you can open yourself up to something other than, you know, that. Yeah. There's a whole world of like <clears throat> just joy of having other people to laugh with and connect with and um, have something in common with. Yeah, and it does come back to what I was saying earlier, like expanding the story. Just like if you're getting rid of toxicity, how are you restoring? If you're able to say a blanket statement like, I don't trust women, you have got, we have got to give the same amount of attention to the exact opposite, which is if you have a belief that I don't trust women, all I invite you to do is start to even that out a little bit. What if you did? What could that look like? What could it look like to make that into an and statement? In the past, I haven't trusted women because of experience, and I'm ready to get a little bit more nurturing and to insert myself into groups of women that are trusting and safe. Mm -hmm. You know, start to set your intention. Kyla mentioned that it's a place that I've struggled. I've never shared everything with anyone, and it brings up a beautiful point that Brene Brown talks about, which is, vulnerability, not everybody gets to be inside of your full vulnerabil vulnerability. So Jody and I have mm -hmm. something special yeah. because we've grown up together since we were teeny tiny little girls, right? We were babies. Um, and so that does make a little bit different dynamic. Not everybody deserves to hear all of your vulnerable spots, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. something that's a treasure. Our vulnerability is a treasure and we get to decide mm -hmm. Who gets to hold that with us? And it's not always, you know, everything for everyone. Um, Aunt Kendra says, or negative people, good to find that positives in friendship. Yes. Look at your friendships. And listen, we all know we have certain friendships, relationships, um, connections that have a negative vibe to them. And so we just spend less time there. Yeah. Right? Don't focus your time there. It's really yeah. about investment. It's always about investment. Um, Anybody else? Did you have see any Muriel has a great um, comment. You also need to notice who you attract because you need you may need some healing to stop attracting takers yes. because you're an overgiver. Yes. 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 Notice a pattern, and maybe this is part of your trust issue, is that you have repeatedly drawn the same type of person into your life that is taking and taking and taking and taking from you and not giving anything back to the friendship. That is something that you need to look within. Yeah. Why do I keep attracting this type of person? Do I not love myself enough to create boundaries for my friendships? Right. Do I not love myself enough to have people who return to me what I am giving energetically to them? Because that does come down to whether or not you love yourself enough. And um, yeah, that's just- it's, I mean, always, that is, it's also always a mirror. It's always a mirror. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how many times I have called Jody. I know the people and the relationships in my life that are my lessons for this lifetime. And I know that I will have a lot more and we all do. And anytime I feel triggered, I'm able to say like, Ooh, I am learning a lesson. What is the lesson? What is the lesson? What is the lesson? Because honestly, if the same pattern begins to show up, then we have to look inward. Just like Jody said, what is being triggered? Why are we feeling triggered? And what is it within them that we see within us that we don't like? What is that? And it just is a really beautiful, fertile ground for growth. And that's really, yes, uh, Muriel, absolutely. I love it. Hi, that Taylor. A, um, a lot of people saying they have great women in their life, which I love. Shelly says, Shelly says, experience has taught me to hold back and not open up. I have trusted and been used and tossed to the wolves. It is for sure something I will have to work on. Shelly, yes. Look inside, And Shelley. so also. Why? Why would you allow that? And also, you know, too, though. Don't go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say, it just, it, it comes down to, um, again, holding standards for what it is that you want in your friendships. And here's the thing. There's a difference between holding a standard of what you want and expectation, because you cannot, you can be disappointed if you hold people to expectations that they're not willing to show up for, but, and ever <laughs> expectations, you, ever. but you don't have to accept that if that is not what you need. And again, if, if you have been tossed to the wolves in friendships, I'm sorry, but that's, that's not a friendship. There's something else. There's, there's something else, a different lesson that you okay. are supposed to learn from that, but it's not a friendship. It's not something that you should hold against all other future friends because that's not how real friendship shows up. Yeah. And also too, just on a more nurturing level, on a nurturing level of switching language, which is what this is about. And Jody and I work on this too. You know, Shelly, I'm going to use that for an example of what you posted because we can look at it like, yeah, that is really the truth. Experience has shown you that you need to hold back because if you don't, you're not safe. And so we can change that language. We can look at it in a different perspective and use it for healing, which is in the past, when I have opened up, it hasn't been a safe environment and I have felt betrayed. Moving forward, I'm so looking forward to being open and accepted in a safe and loving relationship because that's what friendship is. So starting there, starting with our stories, um, based on truth and expanding them into what we actually want. And a lot of times, and this isn't just Shelly, this is my story too, and everybody's story at some level, it comes down to what we believe we deserve. And so a lot of us have to look at boundaries. I am for sure someone who, if somebody puts great expectations on me, I resist. If somebody is showing up to me with expectations to fill one of their needs or their needs that don't fit into my boundaries, I'm like, that just doesn't work. But I ha it took me a long time to get to that, and I'm still working on it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it is looking at what are your boundaries? What are you allowing in? What can you finally say? Like, I am sorry. I don't accept this anymore. It doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's how I think we move on. Yeah, and I think that, again, it, I, I really think that, um, like you said, when you listen to Brene Brown, which again, I'm going to recommend highly, if you can get the Hoopla app and get your, your um, library card put in, you get free access to some of Brene's work on audio, um, audio free audio books on Hoopla. But she talks about it. You, you, you don't just meet somebody for coffee the first time and bleh, tell them your entire life story. They haven't earned the right to know that about you. That friendship builds and trust builds over a, a small amount of time. Yeah. And, um, you know, you just, you have to work on that. And again, know who you're talking to. Release the expectations that, because if somebody, if I meet somebody new and we hit it off and we are great, and then they start trying to call me at six o'clock in the morning, I'm going to be like, um, you don't know me that well. <laughs> because I don't, Cause I don't even I don't call you at six o'clock in the morning. Like, yeah, you're not going to hear from me until like 10 o'clock in the morning. So don't go urgent requesting me at 6 a.m. because you clearly don't know me all that great. So just know that um, it just, you have to, it's, it is a, a different type of, it, it just, it's different as an adult. And again, we've talked about this, Kim, you know, as an adult, you will meet people if you have kids around the same age, or if you have dogs and you go to the dog park, or, you know, if you go to a church, if you go, like you can meet people in those areas, but if you're not finding the right people, know that there is the internet, know that there's so many groups out there that you can emerge yourself into. And also know that if you just feel lonely, you are completely normal and that is okay. Yeah. And you can just know, sit with that and be like, okay, I feel like I don't have a lot of female friends and that hurts and that feels hard to listen to people talk about their friendships and there's still the opportunity. Like it happens for Rachel and Jenna and uh, Amy Porterfield. Yeah. So, one one yeah. quick thing. I just saw yes. Rebecca wrote, when your mom is the biggest judge in your life, you are trained to think that everyone is judging you. That is the truth. So mm -hmm. here I come in as an EFT practitioner and Jody is a hypnotherapist. So we can both tell you your belief system was given to you, right? You were given a blueprint. And now as an adult, you get to look at that blueprint and say, oh, actually, you know what? This room doesn't fit there anymore. 
I'm growing out of this blueprint and it's time to remake a new one. And so that is the truth. If you're, if you're raised in a home where everyone is judgmental, your mom especially judges everything, that is your experience. That is a chapter. That's a chapter. And that is the truth. And as you become an adult, as you get to the place where you probably are now with more awareness, you get to say, at one point in my life, I felt judged for everything. And I'm actually set up to believe that in the future, everyone is going to judge me. And I don't accept that belief. So I'm going to start to create a new intention and a new belief that says, I will be careful with who I trust as I get better and stronger and wiser and what's okay for me. Mm -hmm. You see how you just can soften that? It's okay yeah. to look at your experience, know that's the truth, and expand it into the intention that you want to create. That's how we grow. That's definitely yeah. where growth comes from. Anybody else? Oh, I want to get back to all of these, but Kim, I know you have to go. Yeah, I like, have. You have to go. It's okay. I have like five more okay. minutes. I just got a text. Okay. Um, and Shelly says, I used to have an issue with always wanting to make everyone happy and never saying no to anyone. A chronic oh. giver. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Chronic yeah. giver. And then on the flip Start side. Start practicing no. Start practicing no. Yeah. No, thank you. No, no. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's imperative that you have boundaries. Yeah. Um, I saw a quote the other day that was so beautiful. It was like, um, basically boundary. Okay. I'm going to butcher this quote. <laughs> Something to do with like, yeah, there is either you can have walls up or you can create boundaries, which are doorways. So mm. walls up mean nobody can get in. I love or that. Boundaries mean having a doorway that teaches people where to come in order to reach me. You can yeah. come to my door. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that there are no walls and it doesn't mean your whole house is made of windows and they can come in and look and see anything that they want to. There is a doorway. That is how you reach me. So I love um, that. And saying no is a perfect way to start with those boundaries. Yeah. And you know, this goes back to every single thing that we talk about, which is perfection is an illusion. You're, this is not about us showing up perfectly. I talk about this on my page design thoughts. I'm a connection specialist. I help people connect more fully to their lives. Yet there are places in my life that I am not connected to fully. Like, but guess what? I still show up. I still do the work. I still help guide others. So we're going to have days, moments, maybe even weeks where we have walls up. And because we're yeah. in this journey, we're going to look and say, ooh, there's those walls again. Shit. I see the walls. Let's take those down and let's put the boundaries up, right? It's about growth. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to mess up. We're going to show up. We're going to trigger people. Trigger, people are going to trigger us. It's all about continuing the work, continuing mm -hmm. to learn more. Um, and I just think that expectations are not equal to standards. Kyla. Mm -hmm. Yes, girl. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I love seeing all your guys' comments. Yes. Me too. Thank you guys for being here and interacting with us. This has been even more fun than I thought it would be. I know. And <laughs> honestly, I want to answer every single person. I literally have two minutes, but I have to just mention this. Sharon just wrote something. Sharon Shanka. I seem to attract jealous people. So what I'm going to lovingly invite you to do is look at your belief around comparison and start to go back on something that Jody said, which is a lot of times we attract what we accept, right? So mm -hmm. if you're attracting jealous people, then it's time to look at your magnetic field. Why are you attracting in people who are jealous? It might be for validation. All of this is okay, right? We all do. It might be because when people come in and they're jealous, it validates how you are or aren't feeling about yourself. But for anyone who notices what type of people they're attracting, um, start to look at what you're putting out because what we know is what we put out is what we get back. Trust me, when I first started being an EFT practitioner, I attracted a lot of needy people. Why did I attract a lot of needy people? Because I needed external validation that I could be a helper. And when I noticed that, it was a game changer. I was like, ooh, I'm seeking external validation. That's why I'm bringing in needy people. And then what can I say when so many needy people show up? I'm so overextended. I'm so busy, right? Yeah. So start to look yeah. at what we're attracting. 
Yeah. Uh, and that, that just is, uh, you know, there is, um, it's hard if you haven't done a ton of work on yourself yet to yeah. not know the difference between the ego and like the actual soul of you. Like, what does my ego want versus what does my heart and my soul want for my life? Yeah. So we don't need our egos to be stroked anymore. <laughs> like, find what it is that your soul and your heart need and you will be so much more fulfilled. Yeah. So and if you're looking for any information on ego work, um, the power of now by Eckhart Tolle completely changed. This was years ago, but it's a good one. Um, completely changed my understanding around ego. It's called the power of now. And it's really, really good. Awesome. Okay, friends. I think that's it. I think we got it. You guys, thank you for being here. This was so much fun. Yes. Um, we'll Kim be... and I are talking about doing this every week for at least three weeks, yes. right? Yes. Because we want to see how this feels to have basically friendship conversations online because we, we love to have each other to talk to, but this and including all of you was so, so enlightening. And I, and I love that we can open the conversations like this again, please. We're going to link the article that we're talking about that started this whole conversation in the comments. Please read it. It's so good. It's going to make you feel normal. It's going to make you understand <laughs> that we are all the same. Yeah. We are all the same, guys. And um, we're just in you know, different places of our own work on ourselves and, um, and finding those right friendships. So thank you so much for being here. Yay. Bye. All right. We'll Have see you next week. Day. Bye. Bye.